And now, let's join Ace Broadcaster Mamode Akuga as he takes us inside the Niger Delta. Hello out there and welcome to the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. I'm your regular host, Mamude Akuga. In today's package, we kickstart with the ongoing controversy over the Olua of Worries tool, which has assumed a dramatic twist with the disappearance of a 400-year-old crown that is symbolic of the cultural heritage of the Shakiri people of Delta State, South-South Nigeria. Our second story for today's package is centered on the life and times of the Ovie of Igbide Kingdom in Isoko South local government area of Delta State. His Royal Majesty King Edward Obukeni I. We will, in the course of the program, bring you more reactions to the recent threat by the Ijo Youth Council, IYC, to paralyze socio-economic activities in the Niger Delta over the non-constitution of a board for the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. And finally, in today's package, is a report on the Nigerian Maritime University, Okerenkoko, which was established by the federal government to develop local manpower in the maritime sector as demanded by the Pan-Niger Delta Development Forum, PANDEF, in its 16-point agenda. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region will be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, determined to make a difference. Welcome back. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. The crisis surrounding the selection process of the next Olu of Wari in Delta State is far from being over, as police authorities continue to investigate the disappearance of the 400-year-old royal crown from the Olu's palace in Wari. The crown, which is an integral part of the coronation process of an Olu of Wari, was allegedly stolen from the palace by some interested parties in the succession battle. Worried by this shameful and ixome incident, a Shakiri woman in Wari took to the streets last week to protest what they say is an unprecedented event targeted at embarrassing the Shakiri nation. Several Shakiri women from different parts of Wari Kingdom last week gathered at the famous Okiri roundabout in Wari to protest the alleged disappearance of a royal crown artifacts and monuments of Wari Kingdom. They marched from Okere Roundabout to the Olu's Palace to register their displeasure over the stolen crown. The women carried several placards with inscriptions, We are mothers in the Shakiri land. We are angry. Bring back the crown or suffer the consequences. Final warning. An ancestral causes on all that are involved in the missing crown and their generation. The Shakiri women demanded the immediate return of the crown. Those that are in possession of the crown should make returns of the crown because it's our heritage. The Ishakiri mothers who said their protest march was actually a plea and a warning gave a three-day ultimatum to the culprits who stole the crown to return it or face their wrath. They vowed to go half-naked, invoke some spiritual powers and lay curses on those responsible for the missing crown. We're going to give them three days. They're not black for that three days. All the old mama, the young ones, we go naked, swear. Then we go go on Rubo, go carry on Rubo. They know people in Canada, they be shaking. They don't take on Rubo, they do me. Come dance for them, swear for them. The crown, which is said to be a parting gift from the King of Portugal to Don Domingos, who later became Ulua Tuashe the first, has been used to crown the last 14 monarchs of Wari Kingdom. If the crown is not found soon, is it likely to stall the coronation of Omoba Shola Emiko, which has been slated for some time in July this year? Chief Robinson Ario, a Google of Wari Kingdom, says the crown does not make the king. It's not the hood that makes the monk. In other words, what makes a chief, for instance, it's not that um, Chief Ario is dressed this way that makes him so. The chief in Chief Ario that makes Chief Ario the Chief Ario that Chief Ario is, is the substance in Chief Ario. And so, 
Without the crown, there can be king. But without a king, there can't be crown. It will be recalled that some interested persons in the Olu of Wari succession battle allegedly invaded the Olu's palace on the 31st day of March 2021 and carted away the crown and other royal artifacts and monuments, prompting the Olu's advisory council to send a petition to security operatives and naming the suspended Olu Bushere of Wari, Chief Airi Emami and his cohorts as possible culprits in the disappearance of the royal items. The police is still investigating the matter and has interrogated Chief Airi Emami, who continues to deny knowledge of the incident. The invasion of the Olu Palace, and that's why I was invited, and which I told them I know nothing about. As the days go by and we inch closer to the coronation, it is hoped that the missing crown will be found and a hitch-free coronation ceremony would usher in Prince Sholai Miko as the 21st Olu of Wari Kingdom. Inside the Niger Delta 47 years after he took over the throne of his forefathers, His Royal Majesty Edward Obukeni I, the OV of Igbide Kingdom, Isoko South Local Government Area of Delta State, finally joined his ancestors on the 28th day of January 2021. The monarch, who was aged 81, was the eighth OV of Igbide Kingdom, which was founded in 1658. Several cannon shots fired to signal the commencement of activities leading to the formal announcement of the demise of His Royal Majesty Edward Obukeni I, the OV of Igbide Kingdom. The palace gate is then opened to admit chiefs and other members of the kingdom who will be part of the historic announcement of the passing of the monarch who joined his ancestors three months ago. As people and chiefs begin to gather, a sense of loss envelopes the kingdom and wailing is heard from different sections of Igbide. After everyone is seated in the palace, Chief Gospawa Okboro, the Oletwekba of Igbide Kingdom, proceeds to make the historic announcement. <laughs> The news of the traditional ruler, although it is broken out today, it has filtered into members of the community because his absence is always conspicuous. But by tradition, nobody mentions it. The whole town has been down spiritually. People felt so much and are still feeling the absence of the traditional ruler. A king that was loved by his people, Ovie Edward Obukeni I was the longest reigning monarch in the whole of his circle nation and the second longest reigning monarch in Delta State. He is a king who had the uh, Igbide at heart and he labored very well for the progress and development of this community. He somebody who was uh, full of wisdom and his advice you cannot undermine. So we are so pained that uh, he left us so soon. A seven-day mourning period has been declared in the kingdom. Also, there will be no farming for the period in honor of the departed monarch. So from today, we are going to nobody will go far. We are going to stay several days to mourn our king. Although Ovi Edward Obukeni the first had a rough start in his monarchy due to a power tussle. Major General Paul Omo retired. The Olodi of Igbide, Anotuke of Isoko Nation, says his reign was progressive for Igbide Kingdom. All over the world, there must be a tussle over leadership. In this particular case, the 
late king had some very rough start in which I was involved in settling. Uh, he had a relation who was who wanted the throne also and leveled at the relations against him, which had to be investigated. But for my involvement, that matter wouldn't have been cleared. When that matter was resolved, I was very, very happy that from the beginning of his reign, I was involved. He's been a very kind man, non-assuming. You wouldn't even know that he is the most senior traditional ruler in both Isogo North and Isogo South. As tradition demands, the Igbide people will now wait for three years before installing another king in the kingdom. There will always be more than one qualified person. And in any such situation, every qualified person will want to ascend the throne. So these three years gives enough room to balance interests and come to a consensus. In the meantime, a regent who is known as Oyoroba Ovie will rule the kingdom for the next three years. The Oyoroba Ovie was also unveiled by the Council of Ogbedio last week, three days after the announcement of the demise of the king. He is His Royal Highness Michael Ovadie, who will now reign over Igbide Kingdom for the next three years, while the two ruling houses decide the candidate to present as the next Ovie of Igbide Kingdom. Inside the Niger Delta. The recent threat by the Ijo Youth Council, IYC, to resume hostilities in the Niger Delta should the government of President Muhammad Buhari fail to immediately constitute an inaugurator board for the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has continued to generate reactions from Niger Deltans. In this report, correspondent Chika Abuzia takes a look at political motivations surrounding the clamor for the constitution of a new board for the NDDC, which is currently being investigated for alleged massive corruption since its establishment as an intervention agency in the Niger Delta in the last 19 years. We are giving the federal government, Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, a one month ultimatum to close out on the board inauguration for the NDDC. I want to make it clear that between now and the one month, if the board is not brought in, we may not be able to guarantee the safety of oil operations in the region. When we say we are shutting down, there will be no activity. The recent threat by the IYC to paralyze social economic activities in the Niger Delta if President Buhari failed to appoint and inaugurate a new NDDC board within one month has generated mixed reactions from various interest groups in the region. Speaking in solidarity with the IYC at a state function in Isoko South local government area of Delta State, Governor Ifanyi Okoa underscored an urgent need for a board, claiming that the current interim administrative structure in the NDDC was unknown to law. We are totally embarrassed that after several, several months, we are unable to reconstitute the board of the NDDC. You are running a sole administratorship which is foreign to us because unknown to law. While Governor Okoa's position on the current leadership structure of the NDDC captures the views of other governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, their counterparts in the All Progressives Congress insist that the status quo should remain until ongoing forensic audit of NDDC activities is concluded. We believe that you will be given some time, at least, to at least put things in place for the benefit of all of us. We don't, there's nothing to gain from all this change in leadership of NDDC as if you are going to fetch water. You are going to fetch water. We will not get anywhere. I wholeheartedly commend President Mohamed Buhari for setting up a forensic audit to look through the books of NDDC. I also welcome the setting up of an interim administration to manage the affairs of the commission pending the conclusion of the forensic audit. 
at the request of state governors and other interest groups, President Buhari in October 2019 ordered a forensic audit of the NDDC to investigate alleged cases of corruption in the system and reposition the commission to function better as an intervention agency. In their assessment of the clamor for the constitution of a new board for the NDDC, which is currently undergoing reforms, some observers have come to the conclusion that there are deliberate efforts to politicize the forensic audit of the commission. Relying on the provisions of Section 23 of the Act establishing the NDDC, frontline human rights lawyer Frank Tiete disagreed with the submission that President Buhari was promoting illegality in the NDDC by allowing it to run an interim administration. According to Section 23 of the NDDC Act, which stipulates clearly that the president has overriding powers to make such directives, to give such directives to the NDDC, whether they are of a general nature or specifically with regards to policy to the NDDC, and they, such directives must be complied with. So what the president has done in appointing a sole administrator in line with that particular section of the NDDC Act is not only in order, but it's in the interest of the NDDC and indeed the entire uh, Niger Delta region. The reason is clear. The president has said that he has refused to appoint a board because of the corruption and the sleaze that have been associated with the NDDC. And that a board to be appointed for the NDDC would be made when there is a clean slate. And prior to that time, there should be a, there should be a forensic audit. So there is absolutely nothing wrong when the president appoints a sole administrator to superintend over the activities and the operations of the NDDC pending when the forensic audit has been concluded. At the moment, the threat by the Ijo Youths Council to paralyze socio-economic activities in the Niger Delta is generating concern over the safety of lives and property, given the already fragile state of security in the region. The Niger Delta at this point, where we have issues in the northeast, we have issues in the west, we have issues in the southeast in recent times, you cannot, as IYC, begin to champion a movement that will be liking to answers. No, that's not a job, people. Because if you liken it to answers, being a child's play, it therefore means that there's going to be chaos. There will be burning of uh, vehicles. There will be looting of government properties and private properties. Uh, and and, and it, is, it is Niger Delta people that will be looted. The much ado about constituting an NDDC board is in spite of the fact that President Buhari has consistently assured Niger Deltans that a new governing board will be constituted as soon as the ongoing forensic audit of the commission is concluded. Right now, field forensic auditors are embarking on a project's verification exercise across the Niger Delta to determine the actual state of projects awarded by the NDDC from its inception in 2001 to August 2019. On completion of their field work, they would transmit their findings to lead forensic auditors operating from the NDDC headquarters in Port Harcourt. Working collaboratively, the forensic auditors representing reputable audit firms at national and international levels are expected to forward a comprehensive report on their findings to the presidency within three to four months. Inside the Niger Delta Introducing from the heart of Nigeria's Niger Delta region, a residential estate like no other, Victoria Creek Gardens Estate, VCG2 Airport Road, Potakot River State. A blend of aesthetics, functionality and simplicity built into 600 units of safe and comfortable accommodation. Located in an urban serene environment, VCG2 Estate is just 5 minutes away from the Potakot International Airport. It features an already built police station, a shopping mall, hospital, hotel, cinema, club, gym, playground and many other facilities for your comfort. Purchase a home at our irresistible offer today for you and your family or just simply invest in our real estate for a fantastic return on investments. For more information, call us on 070-410-01558 or visit our office at Plot 14 Woji Road, GRA Phase 2, Portacot, Victoria Creek Gardens Estate, Oasis in the Garden. Heritage Bank. Service. Performance. Respect. Integrity. Innovation. 
tenacity, excellence. Heritage Bank, your timeless wealth partner. Azigel Group, oil and gas, dredging, power and air transportation. Azigel Group, petroleum product sufficiency, energy sustainability and infrastructure development. And now we continue our review of Pandev's 16-point agenda. An immediate takeoff of the Nigerian Maritime University Okeren Koko was one of the 16 demands of the Pan-Niger Delta Forum Pandev in its November 2016 meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari and remains the only request so far made by the federal government ever since. While they commend the federal government for releasing initial funds to enable the university commence operations, some Niger Delta activists are demanding adequate funding of their institution for it to achieve its objective of manpower development in the maritime sector. Correspondent Ekanami Ofori has the details. The Nigerian Maritime University, situated at Okerenkokuwari Southwest Local Government Area of Delta State, was conceived under the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan as a vehicle for manpower development in a global maritime economy that has become increasingly knowledge-driven. The Maritime University, an initiative of the Nigerian Maritime Administrative and Safety Agency, NIMASA, was also conceived to properly harness Nigeria's vast maritime endowment and create a viable blue economy for the country. In spite of its potential benefits for the Nigerian economy, the institution could not take off several months after its establishment was approved by the Federal Executive Council in 2015. Considering that the university would build capacity, particularly for youths in the Niger Delta, create employment opportunities for them, and reduce tension in the region, Pandev, in its November 2016 meeting with President Buhari, urged him to facilitate the process for the university to take off immediately. With the approval of 5 billion naira takeoff grant and additional 1 billion naira to provide essential infrastructure and staff recruitment, the Nigeria Maritime University commenced operations in 2017. In February 2018, the National Universities Commission NUC approved commencement of undergraduate degree programs effective from the 2017-2018 academic session. Consequently, the institution took off with three faculties of transport, engineering and environmental management, as well as a school of basic studies. In line with the NUC approval, 13 major disciplines of the institution were fully accredited with an extension of privileges accorded other federal universities. In spite of its recognition by the NUC, the Maritime University is faced with gross infrastructure deficits, a situation that is blamed on inadequate funding by the federal government. The environment, the area, lack good healthcare facility, it lacks portable drinkable water, it lacks electricity, it lacks marine boats, speedboats to convey them to this location. So this is a new school, we agree, but these are some things that need to be put in place immediately. That Maritime University is well disposed to bring in a whole lot of dividends to Nigeria as a whole. Two things can make Nigeria very great. The marine sector and also the petroleum sector. More that will attract international investment into it. Four years after it commenced operations, the Nigeria Maritime University is yet to be located to its permanent site at Okorenkoko. Its current temporary site in neighboring Kuruti town provides limited space befitting of a university. There was no prearrangement or architectural plan of that school. It was, it's a rental apartment. It's a rental apartment that was rented by the government and the structure there does not signify a modern university. For the Maritime University to function properly, 
the federal government has been urged to address a culture of nepotism governing its recruitment and admission policy. How many Shekris have gained admission to that school? How many Sokos? How many Urobos? But take the statistics of the workforce in that school. You know where they come from. Just like the ministry, just like we have in the amnesty office. It's the same problem. It has been idealized, not Niger digitalized. The Nigeria Maritime University, Okoren Koko, is the first fully fledged maritime university in West Africa. It is expected to provide technical and managerial capacity development for a new generation of Nigerians to effectively manage the maritime sector for which Nigeria has great potentials. It is on this note that concerned Niger Deltans call on the federal government to ensure that it is adequately funded and properly managed to achieve the goals and objectives for which it was established in 2015. Inside the Niger Delta. Well, that's the much we can take on the program for today. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region, We'll be back same time, same station next week. Until then, you can follow us on our social media handles showing right now on your screen. Also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at NDNTV Nigeria. Until next week, I am Mamode Akua thanking you for staying with us. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.